So I want to give you a warning before you watch this. This is probably the most uncomfortable interview I've ever done in my life. And I've interviewed a lot of different people. Uh, I want to warn you, you may not want to watch this video because the stories this moderator tells of what his job was at Facebook with the videos he was watching every day and his job was to report to Facebook to take these videos down and many of these videos were left up, they're going to leave an, a, 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 an image in your, in your head. So if you don't want that kind of a thing, just don't watch this. Now, on the flip side of it, uh, this was scheduled to be released a couple weeks from now, and it's being released today because uh, well, today, while you're watching the video today, today is Dece October uh, 4th, and uh, uh, Facebook's been down for the last few hours, all day. Facebook and Instagram have been down. And I, I don't know what this has to do with that, if anything. I just think it's something you need to watch to know because this stuff bothers me a lot because this kind of stuff is stuff that innocent kids are being affected by. And I think the people at Facebook can do something about this. So if you watch this and uh, uh, you feel compelled to share it with others who have influence, uh, I recommend you do that. But if you're somebody that doesn't have, uh, 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 doesn't want to get the visual of what this gentleman who worked as a moderator at Facebook reveals and talks about, and is uncomfortable at the end himself talking about this, I suggest if there's any video I recommend you skipping, this being the one for you to skip. With that being said, I've given you the warning, and I'm letting you know it's going to be uncomfortable. Having said that, if you do stick around to watch it, here's the interview with Sean Spiegel. My guest today is Sean Spiegel, who was a former Facebook moderator, and we're going to get down to the bottom of what is going on at Facebook, but the life of a moderator at Facebook. He was there for about six or seven months. It's going to give you, hopefully, a lot more perspective on what happens on the back end. With that being said, Sean, thank you so much for being a guest on Valuetainment. Thank you very much for having me today. So, Sean, if, if you don't mind, let's just start off with the basics. For the audience who doesn't know what is a Facebook moderator, what is the job of a Facebook moderator? So the general job of a Facebook moderator is you are put into specific queues, as in specific types of content. And for a Facebook moderator, what you are to do is you're to go through this type of content that's given to you. And you're just supposed to go through the policies. You're supposed to action it. And if there's anything out of the ordinary, you would add some notes to it and you would move on. So that would be what a general Facebook moderator does. So, so for, is there levels to moderators or no? Is there like, a, you know how you know, level one clearance, level two clearance, level three, is there anything like that or no? Every moderator is same level. No, no. In fact, it, there are different levels. It's not specifically levels like one, two, three. It's actually you're broken down into different types of departments. Uh, for most people, you would be in the general queue. That's just people that have the basic knowledge of Facebook, basic area of content. What you're mostly going to see there is just general photos, memes, pictures, nothing that would be out of the ordinary. Uh, text messages, instant messages, just everything that would be very benign. Uh, for me, as an example, I was actually promoted to the graphic violence and hate speech division. That is a division that actually requires a whole different set of skills. And my title actually went from moderator to social media content analyst as I went through there. Got it. So my title there was social media content analyst. And what I did is I specifically dealt with content that was in the graphic violence. So I dealt with pictures, photos, videos of basically the worst things that you could do to a human or an animal. And I also dealt with a lot of hate speech as well, a lot that had to do in and out of the United States. But to answer your question, the cues are generally regulated depending on what your expertise is. If you have a degree in specific areas, you're able to focus on. But the largest queue, the one that most people are in, would be the general queue. And that's where you'll just see the most benign of content. That's where most content goes to. If you have a specialty in something, if you specialized in an area, you would go to some of these different ones, sexual exploitation, sexual solicitation, drugs and firearms, graphic violence, hate speech. I could go on and on. 
Got it. So uh, 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 can you unpack what some of the stuff you saw? I mean, you know, sometimes I sit and I let you say I'm going through my news feed and I'll see a mother or a father beating a six-month-old kid. I'm like, why is this thing here? It's got 52 million views. I'm like, this, what, what's the purpose of leaving this on? Or you'll see some bizarre videos that make zero sense for them to be on, but they have those things up there. What did you see? And I can only imagine as a user what that makes me feel when I walk away. What are some of the things you saw? I saw a lot. The best way to explain it is if you've been to many of these sites, I know some of them are not around anymore, but there were sites such as um, Best Gore, Chaotic with a K, there was the Live Leaks. Um, there were many other sites that I can think of like Hard Candy. And you would have these uh, videos mainly of the, just these horrific acts that could range from child pedophilia to putting fireworks in a dog's mouth and then them setting it up on fire to um, fathers making their daughters have sex with pigs and then stabbing the pig while the daughter was having sex with the pig. Um, I saw those types of videos day by day. A lot of these had to deal with bestiality, abuse against animals. Um, I also specialized in, during the summer, it was in China, the dog eating festival. So the, uh, Facebook allowed these different types of Shit. videos and photos up there of people that were cooking, skinning, eating dogs alive, because Facebook said that due to the cultural differences, it would be the equivalent of us having pictures of cows or chickens. So they allowed people to basically just mutilate dogs on live stream through video, through photos for the sake of this dog food festival that they have in China every summer. So you see that video, you see the dog eating festival in, in China. What else was there? So, so far it's sexual exploitation, animal, any other kind, are you seeing also killing, are you seeing like live shooting? What, what else are some of the things you guys yes. are seeing? Uh, there were plenty of live shootings. In fact, a lot of them came from the United States having to do between gang wars, people that would um, just have their cell phones out in the middle of a shootout. There would also be a lot of content from the Middle East of people that were um, stoning pedophiles to death or people that were basically just beating their kids until they were black and blue on the face and their eyes were popping out of their head. A lot of the content that had to do with in the Middle East usually had to dealt with beating women and children or stoning people that they perceived as doing a wrongdoing. There was, in fact, this one video that I was working with content wise, and it was a person going to put a gun in another man's mouth and then pulled the trigger. And you could visibly see the innards going through the back of his skull. And I actioned it to delete it. And there was another person that like checks the moderators, checks the checker, so to speak. And this person made the claim that what we saw was not actually the visible innards going out, but bullet fragments. And I made the argument that it's clearly white. These are skull fragments coming out of the back of their head. They're not silver. They're not bullet holes. And this person actually said that I was wrong. And that video was allowed to stay on there because of that. So a lot of a lot more of the content had to deal with uh, sexual exploitation. A lot of it dealt with children that were online and they were basically being groomed by pedophiles to come meet them in person. Uh, there was also an incident with organ harvesting videos. So a lot of these children in other countries were basically being ripped apart alive and they were having their organs taken out while they were screaming. And I remember how bad it was that day because everybody had to come into the main area and calm everybody down. There were like people that were throwing up on the floor, like people that were just screaming and crying. Wait, these are your coworkers who are throwing up on the floor? Yes, and um, I remember one of our uh, team leads was telling us how we were going to be getting more graphic content specifically because Facebook couldn't keep up with the amount that they were getting. So they were telling us that like the floodgates were opening. So we were just going to be dealing with graphic content all the time in my department. 
So I got two questions. Let me go to the one uh, first. Uh, uh, you know, when cops, and cops are known for having a very high divorce rate mm -hmm. because the life of a cop is not the most glamorous life. You know, all we see is, you know, what they're doing. We see it on TV, good cops, bad cops, all this stuff. But they have a very high divorce rate. The life sucks from what many of my friends talk to me about. A person who's a divorce attorney, you're not going to be able to have... Uh, you're constantly talking about divorces, and if you're married, you're going to come home, and all you're thinking about is you're probably next because your entire life is about divorces. I was being recruited to be a special forces at the 18 Delta 5th Group at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and they asked me to go interview with other 18 Deltas, and the guy was telling me, he says, you ever planning on getting married and falling in love? I said, of course. He says, don't ever become special forces because you can't. You're psychologically going to be off. I'm like, I'm psych he says, you're psychologically going to be off. That's going to mess with you. That was one interview. Then I went to the next guy, then the next guy, then the next guy. Some jobs you take, they're going to mess with you. But this is different. There's a difference between you watching, you know, certain videos and certain articles versus seeing this. How are you guys psychologically affected by this when you're doing this eight hours a day and you're going home? How are you handling that? How is it affecting you? Uh, I was actually doing this 10 hours a day. Uh, specifically because they needed extra hands on deck for the extra two hours to do this. So I was there always a bit longer than most other people were, specifically because of the department I worked in. Um, just talking about the mental health of the people that I worked with, it was not good within the building. So there were people that were smearing feces on the bathroom walls. There were people that were defecating in the sinks and the urinals. There were people that would just be like smoking, drinking in the middle of the day in their cars during their break period. There was always talk about people using the break room for sexual activities. There was always people that were bringing in all sorts of illegal substances to take while they were doing this stuff. Uh, just the mental health of my coworkers was not well because of all of this. Uh, specifically going through, we were supposed to have a counselor there, some mental health therapist to help. I was only able to see this person once, and it wasn't even the actual one that worked there. It was someone that was just filling in. And I remember he flat out told me, I don't know how I can help you guys because he did not know what to do he did not see the type of content we were seeing and he just flat out said i'm filling in but i don't know how to help you guys because all of this was new to him as well and i never met the actual person that was supposed to be on board with us every day and a lot of my coworkers i spoke with never met this person either I'm not even sure if this person really existed or maybe this person was only there like a few hours, a few days. So I have no real confirmation on this person ever actually helping somebody through a tough time they've had there. Sean, um, uh, are you guys talking to each other? Uh, are you guys on break? You're like, dude, you, you won't even believe what I just saw today. Is it constant hearing of like visually? Is this a location near Facebook headquarters? Are you offside? G give me a visual of what this looks like and the relationship amongst each other. So that give, okay. give me a little bit of the optics there. All right. So this was not, so this was third party. It was not Facebook. It was a third party vendor named Cognizant Technology Solutions. And so Cognizant had a deal with Facebook that they were going to take a part of their content and they were going to work with it off site. So they had their own sites and we did have some people from Facebook stop by occasionally to see how everything was going. I remember I saw one of Mark Zuckerberg's personal lawyers there once. Um, but for the most part, this was while we had the Facebook tech to go do all the stuff and we had all Facebook's content, it was managed directly by Cognizant. And so going forward with that, it was in Tampa, Florida, and it was in this place called Woodland Center. So it was just this kind of giant parking lot, kind of just in the middle of nowhere. And it was just this small building that had it there. And you walk into the building, 
They have um, a security guard in front of there all times. You're not allowed to bring any pen, paper, pencils, anything you could record or like take any notes on. Not even your phone. So you can't have a phone on you while you're working. No, you cannot have your phone on you. If they see you with your phone, they just immediately fire you. And I'm dead serious. They just they just can you if they see the phone because they're the way that they describe it is all this is other people's sensitive content. So they don't want anybody recording, taking notes, anything, which I understood for like the phones, but for like pencil paper, they didn't even allow that in there. Um, so you go in there and basically you have these two incredibly small bathrooms that only have about two toilets, two urinals in the male bathroom, and I believe just two toilets in the girl's bathroom. And this place housed about a thousand people. So it was terrible conditions for the bathroom. And so you have these two small bathrooms, then you have this kitchen area. And it was just a very small cafeteria. It was just very banal. There was nothing really there. They did set up this little store there and every week they would give you $20 on a card and you could go eat uh, whatever you wanted to as long as you didn't go over your $20 at this little store. But for some reason, all of the food there was junk food. And sometimes they would have like fruit cups, salads, but all the people that were higher up got all those. So it's like the team leaders, the trainers, they were able to get the good food. And so everybody else was really just eating junk food all day. And what really kind of hurt me a lot is I would see this graphic content and what my people would tell me is like, Hey, go grab something there, go cheer yourself up. So I grabbed like, you know, a chocolate milk, some donuts, and I put on a lot of weight while working there. I actually weighed over 300 pounds. Uh, when I left, I have lost uh, about 41 pounds now since then. Um, and I put on some good muscle. I'm very happy about that. But um, it was a very unhealthy lifestyle, just not for me, but for everybody that was working there. So Go after ahead. that, you just have these two main wings and they are just filled with computers. There's no cubicles, no nothing. They say that they wanted it all open but it was just nothing but computers and there was nothing else there for us. They had this one tiny room in the back corner, what was supposed to be like a calm down, relaxing room where it's like, if you need to calm down after seeing this content, you could go in there. They had like Legos, they had like a little billiard board and all that, but no one was ever allowed in there because they would like time you obsessively if you ever got up from your seat. So it would be like if you go to the restroom, they would literally put a timer on your computer. And if it goes over the amount of time, you're going to get yelled at by the boss for going over the time. If you're on a break and you're like a minute late from your break, the computer alarm will go off and it's immediately going to tell your supervisor that you're not there. And even if you're just like right around the corner, you're going to get another warning. You're going to get, you know, dock and pay. So they were very like, obsessive with you being at your computer at all times. In fact, what was just really ridiculous with it is how there were people there that wanted to just get up and walk after spending like four hours doing nothing at the computer. And like the bosses just would not have it. They just wanted to have a body in the seat. They didn't really care how that body was doing. They just wanted the person in the seat and that was it. What were they paying you guys? So they were paying us about $30,000. Um, it was originally 28 working in the graphic violence division. They per just month? Come, per month? Uh, I wish it was per year. They're paying you 30 grand a year? Yes. To, to watch all, okay. Okay, they're paying you 30 a year and that, that's like 15 bucks an hour is what they're paying you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, so these are two separate companies. Now let me ask you, is the liability is the liability on Facebook or is the liability on Cognizant Technology Solutions? And how was Facebook holding these guys accountable for doing their job right? Uh, so that's an easy question to answer. Facebook is not holding them accountable. In fact, it was Cognizant that was the one that backed out of the deal with Facebook about being a vendor for their content. 
Facebook was not holding them accountable at all. Cognizant was able to do whatever they wanted without really any interference, as long as a certain amount of content was being uh, looked at every single day. That's all that they cared about. They really didn't even care much about the accuracy ratings. They just wanted the number to go up to say, we looked at this much content. That was really what they were focusing on. What's um, successful? What percentage is successful to them? So a percentage that was successful to them is they wanted each and every employee to do about 500 to 1,000 pieces of content every day. And I was usually doing about 100 to 200 contents on usually a day where there was not much going on because going through this content, when you're in a specialized area, you have to not only just action it, you have to go through the internet, find out the source of it, if you can find it, verify if it's real or not, make sure you have the links, make sure you, you say how you found it, and then write up a report on it. So a great example would be like, I'm finding a lot of these terrible bestiality videos. And I was able to find a bestiality website and I was able to find those same videos from there. So I was able to find the source of it there. So then I would write up a report saying that this was not an original Facebook piece of content. This was something that was taken from another website. And then I would write up my report saying why it would be taken down, what the actions would be, what it breaks in the policy. So that does take up a good amount of time, especially when you're basically going through the whole internet looking for a piece of content like that. But there were a lot of times when my trainers would tell me, go slow, do it, you're doing great. That's why we promoted you. And then I would have the team leader telling me, no, you need more content, more content, more content done. And so I was getting two different perspectives on what I needed to do there. There was one that was telling me I needed bigger number of content. And then I had another group of people telling me that I needed to just focus on the accuracy of what I was doing because these were real people, real animals in these situations. It was really pretty much the ethical side versus the business side. I'm looking at this Tampa Bay Times article that says Facebook agrees to pay $52 million settlement with content moderators who suffer trauma on the job. Former and current moderators in Florida and across the country will receive $1,000 each and may be eligible for more money to cover medical treatments and damages, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, uh, is this, did you see this actually become a reality? Like, did you guys see payment from Facebook on this $52 million? Uh, no. I believe it's still in court right now, okay. still actually being worked on. Um, Casey Newton from The Verge uh, told me that he wanted me to be a part of it. And so I decided I will be. I originally didn't want to because I didn't want anybody to come across thinking that I'm just doing, like coming out and saying all this stuff for money. Yeah. Like there's a message I wanted to bring about this. But um, I decided that it probably would be best, especially after everything that's happened to me. And then there's another article that says a total of 556 employees will be laid off early next year from a controversial facility near Carrollwood that monitors Facebook for uh, banned content such as hate speech, bullying, threats, and videos of violence against criminals and children, uh, violence against animals and children, cognizant technology solution, a contractor for Facebook plans to close its operations at 7725 Woodland Center Boulevard, about two miles north of Tampa Bay, Tampa International Airport. Is that the facility you were at? The that is the facility, yes, it's sir. crazy. So, so you, you remember when this story came out, because this is two years ago, a year and a half ago, give or take. I do remember that story coming out. So they, so you said Cognizant Technology Solutions dropped Facebook. Yes. Why did they drop Facebook if it's an account that's paying you good money? I believe it was just the bad amount of publicity that they were getting. I got Last you. I heard about it is their stocks were starting to drop and there was a lot of negative news going on about how they were being, how they were treating everybody by being a vendor for Facebook. So they decided just to drop the account altogether. Is this the same cognizant uh, company that's a publicly traded company doing like 16 billion a year, like doing uh, uh, revenue is, yeah, 16.65 in 2020. Is this the company? Like That's the company, yes. Got it, interesting. So I'm sure they don't want that kind of publicity to be tied to that. Is that, no. th is that their business model though? Like do they do this also for Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, other sites as well? Or was this like a singular project that they took with Facebook? As what I was specifically told is that it was not in Florida, but it was in Texas 
there was another branch of Cognizant that was doing the same thing we were doing, but instead of Facebook, Instagram, it was Twitter. So they were doing this for Twitter as well. Okay. Right, right. Because it looks like I'm looking at the reputation. This company doesn't have a bad reputation. It just seems like this one account they were taking. I don't know. Maybe there is. It, it looks like a reasonable company that does good things, and they decided to cut this relationship. So let, let me go a little deeper with this. So, one, you explained what it was like for you guys. I can only imagine how, how challenging it could be. And you were explaining the fact that fetus on the bathroom wall and you know, in the, in the stalls where you wash your hands and you said sex in the bathroom, what, what's that all about? What has that got to do with anything? Is it who they were hiring? Were they pretty much hiring anybody and everybody off the street or was there a requirement to meet to have the job to work here? So there was an initial test that you take for the interview where it goes through how well you're familiar with Facebook and Instagram. And then after that, they show you a book and they say, this is going to be some of the content you might see. And they say, you might see it. And the content was very benign compared to what was actually there. They showed um, hentai, which is like the animation pornography drawings. So they showed some of that. They showed some memes like that had to deal with, um, like, if you had like pineapple on your pizza, you would die or it was just the incredibly benign things like that. There was nothing that was like overly bad. The biggest thing that they showed in that book, and it was a picture that CNN took of this little boy, and I believe he was taken from the Middle East on a plane and he was all bloodied up and uh, he was all dusty and they showed us that. They said, this might be the worst it gets. And I was like- I remember that picture, by the way. Right. And so that that was as far as they showed us saying, like, this is going to be the type of content you'll see. So, of course, I'm thinking if that's the worst, I can do this. Right. Uh, in retrospect, I do believe that they were just hiring bodies to fill the seats. I do not think that they were hiring the best people. I think they seemed like they were fortunate that they had someone like me that had a college degree that had background in going into public records that was able to do the stuff they wanted me to do. Because a lot of my job at the graphic violence division was to go through content. And if it was, um, if it was in the United States, I would go through the accounts, I would go through their LinkedIn, their Facebook, Twitter, anything, any sort of public accounts. I would go look at any information, look at their property records, housing records, go through any sort of utility bills that I could find. And I would basically write a portfolio of them. And I did this a lot in college when I took public affairs reporting. So I was very familiar how to like find public records, go through these areas and do mm. this. Yeah. So that was one reason why they wanted me on the graphic violence division was because I had a good bit of knowledge on how to basically find out how they put it, find the, uh, the bad spot on the apple. So, 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 so you start off as the, the people at the bottom is general Q, which is right. meme stuff like that comes up. You get a promotion, you become a social media content analyst, and you start seeing stuff that just makes no sense. Walk me through the hierarchy structure. Who's after you? Who's after that person? Who's after that person? What does that tree look like? So it's not really like a tree. It's more just like the general queue is at the bottom and what you specialize in would just be all a big circle that is above the general queue. So it's not so much that there was anybody like another department that was above me. Uh, it was very much just different departments that focused on different types of content at that point. Got it. And they only, and those departments were very small. So in my department, it was me and seven other people. And we were, we were the whole graphic violence and hate speech division. They had one that was for bullying that had just 10 people on it. They had one for drugs and firearms. And that one just had about five people on it. So it wasn't like a lot of people were being put into these different areas. The vast majority were just put in general queue and if you showed any sort of promise, they would put you on a different desk. Got it, got it. So, so you said something earlier. You said uh, 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 when you saw this video with the guy shooting the guy's brains out, and you said it was obviously white, and like, no, that's not, that's the gun, it's not real, and 
it was left to stay on, who allowed it to, who was approving it above you? Was it a Facebook person or was it a Cognis technology solution person? It was a Facebook person. Oh, that's a Facebook person. So yes. it goes through you, you kind of mark it up and then it leaves Cognis and technology solution to Facebook and a Facebook person dictates whether they're gonna leave that alone or not. Correct. So, so okay, so when that happens, is like that video that took place where they left it on, did they leave it on in specific countries or they, did they leave it on across the board, anywhere, America, all of that? Or did they filter they, America out because that's the one place they didn't want to leave on? They left it on everywhere, all countries. And the specific reason for that is because Facebook has hyper-specific types of policies. And for graphic violence, what they say is videos that are not in a medical setting and you can see visible innards are not allowed. And so according to this, this was a video, this was not in a medical setting, but they claim that the skull fragments and the bit of brain matter that came out was not visible innards. So they said it could stay on. And so they allowed it. That was their reasoning behind it. I, okay. Uh, what, what other videos that obviously made no sense to stay on, they would leave it on? What other videos did you see where you're like, Okay, there's, like, for example, the pig video you talked about, did that one get taken down? So that one did get taken down, but it got taken down specifically because that was not one that was in the general uh, area of where we get our content from. That one was in a private Facebook page. And this was what I really specialized in, was that there were a lot of private pages, and they would be named something like I Love Dogs or let's go bulldogs or anything like that. And so you would just see it, it would be like a very general name, you wouldn't think anything bad about it. And it was a private only page. So you could only go to that page if you were invited. So if you were actually invited to that you. page, I got you, you then realize that it was actually just a cesspool of specialized content that was horrific and disgusting. And what made it the worst is that these videos and these private pages they were homemade. They were not from other websites. There were people that were making this, these videos and they were inviting people into the page to buy and auction the videos. So what the hardest part about that was is that they were using the Facebook payment system. They were using other means of getting currency and they would have a horrific video such as the video of the pig and the girl and people would actually bet an auction on how much, how much money so they could get the full video. And then that person that made the original video would also take requests from others and make content specialized to tailor, tailored to them. So that's, that's what I dealt with. And a lot of these, this type of content that was homemade by the parents, by the children, by the people that were making money off of it. This was stuff that was just in the private area of these private pages. And Facebook would not allow me to do anything about it because even if I wrote the report, even if I could prove that they were in America, even if I had their driver's license, their face, their license plate, their home address, they said that it would, they said that it would look bad for them. And they said that an internal Facebook team would look at it. And yet that same content was still on there. So are you saying if they really wanted to catch the bad guy, they could, but because they could figure out where it's coming from, is that kind of what you were saying? Yes, and I figured out where a lot of the content was coming from. So did my coworkers that worked with me on the desk. So it wasn't hard for you to figure that out? It was not because people put their names on their content. They will actually like, like make it a brand. They will be stupid enough to show their house, their home address. They are stupid enough to have their car license plate show up in the video. They are dumb enough to say their first and last name. Even though this is a homemade video, you can easily send this to the FBI, but they, Facebook didn't want to do that. Why? Is it because they don't want uh, the users to feel uncomfortable that the information is being shared with a third party? Is that kind of what their alibi was? 
No, in fact, their alibi was that they were saying that this content going public would be bad for Facebook's optics. So they would just have an internal investigation through it, through Facebook's own team. And hmm. obviously that went nowhere when you would see the same profiles, the same pictures, making the same content back the next day, nothing ever happened to them and they're making new content hmm. to go with it. Um, okay, so let's let's go a little bit uh, let's go a little bit deeper with this. So, simple. Why, uh, uh, David? Why do they want? Uh, uh, why do they want the stuff to stay on? Like, what's the purpose of staying on? So, let me kind of give you my skeptical side, and you tell me if I'm on or if I'm off. So, on one end, I sit there and I give them the benefit of the doubt. They have so much content that's coming in, they just can't track all of it. It's it's like they can't even track all of it for the billions of postings that's taking place. So eventually they're just kind of like, you know what, uh, man, we can't get to everything. So you know the whole 98% ratio or the 80% ratio, whatever they got. Okay, so that's that. The next part, they put it in there and they don't take it down because they don't think fully it's inappropriate and they have an excuse or reason to say this makes sense to stay up. Or the next one is it still drives so much traffic and eyeballs that indirectly it's helping the algorithms to help them stay number two website in the world and that helps with business. I don't know, I'm trying to figure out what the reason will be to leave this stuff up. The reason that I can say for leaving the stuff up is that Facebook in general has been staying stagnant in the amount of followers and the amount of people that sign up for it. And it's also been declining in the amount of new users that have been going on Got to it. it. So I think maybe part one would be Facebook is incredibly desperate to keep its own uh, demographic that it has, no matter how obscene and disgusting and perverted it is. Number two, I think Facebook would rather very much just um, put all this under the rug, not even deal with it, not do anything with it, just say we're going to do it, categorize it, file it, but never actually act on it. And I completely believe that Facebook is too much of a coward to actually go after these people that are putting, posting this content on their own website. In fact, I think Facebook is more concerned with hiding it as best as they can and just pretend it never happened. Okay, so we didn't see it. Oh, we didn't see it. But you get a million people, you know how you go uh, uh, online and you see a video and you say report, 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 report. Does that go to an organization like the one you guys were a part of? Like what does a report action do to content that one sees? I'm sure plenty of videos that you see that's like, this is just not appropriate to be on here. When one clicks report, where does that go? So normally when you click report, it would go into the general queue. Once Got it's it. in the general queue, it will either be categorized based on what you see in it, and then it would be taken off into the different other queues. So that's basically how it works for the most part, just with that. Uh, the report button, in my opinion, only really works for the general queue, because when you deal with these higher up, more dangerous things, types of content that you're dealing with, uh, the report button really becomes very banal in a sense that it's just not useful. And the main part of what's happening is it's really more of an AI that's then scanning things to see if it looks similar to what you're looking at. Yeah. And then it will send it forward. Uh, but the report button is really just there, if I had to be honest, for things that are such as like bullying or like something that you just don't agree with, Got anything it. that's speech, speech wise. Um, the way I got the vast majority of my content was specifically through digging through these private pages and what the AI was sending me because I was working with an AI that was trying to help identify graphic content. So I, a lot of what I got was not based on the report button because the vast, the, pub, the general public was not seeing what I was seeing because these were all private pages. So these are not things that would go viral. And the only time the FBI, the police, or like Facebook really got involved is when one of those videos broke out of those private pages and then it got mainstream. There was an instance I remember specifically of um, these two girls and they were babysitting these kids and they were forcing the toddlers and babies to smoke marijuana. And that one went viral. 
And I remember Facebook came in with their team. We actually had pol the local police from that area work with us and we were able to identify them and apprehend those two. So that would be one of those rare instances where we actually did do something, but it only really happened because it went mainstream, because it went viral. And a lot of the content I dealt with just never became viral because it was in these isolated pockets. Uh, just to go on a little bit more about that, with um, a lot of this content, especially the graphic violence stuff, Facebook had this incredibly weird policy where a lot of abuse, whether towards children, animals, adults, they would leave it on there and they would tell us they would leave it on there because they would say that either a good Samaritan or a police officer would see that content and they would like give a lead to who that person was. And so their idea was, we're just going to leave it on there. So hopefully a good Samaritan will give us some info and then they can get justice to them. What do you think about that? It's a lie because the police don't have our systems. The, the police aren't looking at what we're looking at. They don't have, they don't have the software that Facebook has to actually look at the type of content that we're looking at. And I wish I realized that when I was in training instead of believing it and thinking that I was making a change and trying to like help these people and animals, even if they're already dead, as long as like their final moments aren't being desecrated in these videos and pictures. And I really did believe that somehow good Samaritans or police were actually going to help see this content, report on it, say who it was in there. But those people aren't seeing it. Only I'm seeing it. Uh, so, so let me ask you. So sometimes when you run a big company, you don't really know what's going on everywhere, right? I mean, uh, uh, so, you know, Facebook's got, give or take, 60,000 employees. That's a pretty big organization they got. Some sites say they get 1.87 billion unique visitors per month. Some sites say they get 2.5 to 2.8 billion unique visitors per month, users per month. Okay, whatever the number is, let's say 2 billion. That's a lot of people that come to their website on a monthly basis. So you got 60,000 plus employees. You got 2 billion users actively that are logging onto your website. You're, you're the largest country in the world, essentially. China's got 1.5 billion. India's got 1.4, 1.5 billion. You got two billion. You're a country. You're a virtual government. Do you think this stuff is stuff that maybe it's so far away from Zuck's hands that he doesn't even know this, this stuff is taking place? No, he knows what's taking place because his hands are all in it. Like this is his creation. And as we've seen through his multiple appearances with Congress and the way he speaks in any sort of interviews, he obviously presents himself, presents himself as someone that has his hands in all the, all the pies, so to speak. Um, what I think is the problem is one, he, Facebook has grown too big and needs to be cut down into sizable chunks. Maybe they need to be operated by different individuals that are not affiliated with him. But the biggest problem I had was just the reallocation of resources was terrible. There was, so, I talked a little bit about this AI that we were using that was trying to help with graphic content. What the AI was primarily being used for was looking at sexually suggestive photos, not even photos that were sexual, not even photos that showed anything. It wasn't any pornographic images. So examples, like if there's a picture of a girl and she has her butt sticking out in the photo, she's wearing all clothes, the, the AI needed to know if that was a butt focused picture or not. Or a lot of the times we would just look at the pictures and we would just identify if something was cleavage as in the indentation between the breast, that was cleavage. There was another one of identifying women in swimsuits. There was another one that identified nipple or areola. So we actually had to train the AI to look at something and see if they could just identify the areola around the nipple. So this is what a lot of the AI resources were going to, not graphic violence, not child pornography, not any of these terrible things. It was going towards these 
sexually suggestive photos and videos. And it was just a terrible use of the AI. There was absolutely no need to teach an AI how to categorize that content because none of that content was breaking any policy. Because even though we were working with it, we were never actioning that content because there was nothing ever wrong with the content. For some reason, they just wanted that categorized. It was ridiculous that they decided to put the AI to use that way. So, so let me let me go a, a different direction here. So we, you know, uh, uh, throw Alex Jones in there. Throw uh, uh, whoever, what you, you, you know, any of these other guys that are out there. Throw Trump in there. Throw some of these guys that are you know banned from Facebook and they're not on Facebook. And first they took Alex Jones's company down. They took him down. Right? How different do they treat? threats of people that share ideas that they may not agree with, whether as outlandish of an idea as it is as communism or, you know, anarchy or whatever it is, as outlandish as it may be, how do they process that versus the child porn and all the other stuff that they leave on there? In their mind, why do they think this is more threatening than the child porn content? So they deal with the politics more than any of the other content I discussed about, specifically because politics are a major part of US life. And Facebook takes place in the United States. So Facebook has feels like it has this priority to take a look at politics over anything else first. And when I worked there, there were some instances with Justice Kavanaugh when he was having his confirmation, and then there was Dr. Ford who claimed uh, sexual molestation yep. at a younger age. Um, so that was one of those rare times that all of Facebook, all of the FBI got really involved because throughout that entire hearing process, there were people that were on the Trump side that were saying that they wanted to put like pipe bombs underneath Dr. Ford's car and then there was this other side that they wanted to ram cars into Justice Kavanaugh if they if they saw him and they were each like creating their own little terrorist cell deciding on wit on who to kill who to take out for their political ambition and i guess if i just had to go more straightforward with it while the stuff going on is horrendous and terrible and it should be given absolute priority a lot of the content I dealt with should be given that priority. Unfortunately, it seems like the politics and the extremism on both sides, and yes, I'm gonna say both sides because what I witnessed on Facebook, the people on the left side were just as crazy as the people on the right side. A lot of that stuff has been bleeding into real world life and it hasn't just been staying on Facebook or on the internet. And it's been actually bring, being brought into real life actions and consequences. And so I think Facebook has maybe thought that that's a bigger deal of having these things come, these things be more straightforward, especially when a lot of these people are frequent users on their sites. And when they get public headlines, that looks bad for them. So you said on the on the right side, you said the bombs, Ford, all that. What and you said it's crazy on the left side and the right side. What crazy things did you see on the left side? So for the left side, there was there was much talk about how a lot of conservative women should have their genitals mutilated because they were claiming that these conservative women didn't deserve to be women for that reason because they're not going with the feminist side. Uh, there was also a lot going on towards the gay rights where they were saying that they wanted to indoctrinate kids as early as two or three into gay rights act activist group, which I am a person that stands for gay rights, but I'm not a person that would ever like go that forward to someone that's just a young child. Uh, there was also much talk of grooming young children into being drag queens. And there was also much talk going forward about how basically they wanted to start segregating Democrats and Republicans or primarily Democrats and Trump supporters and wanting to like slash the tires of their cars or like deface their housing or threaten them in public. And there was a lot of these actions that were starting to become real world consequences. And so, as I said, there are plenty of crazies on the left side 
that uh, were creating world, real world harm. Now, what access did you have? And earlier on in the messaging, you said the general cue was photo, memes, text messages, instant messenger. So you guys were able to see what's being said in the instant messenger and text messages or no? Yes. Also, whatever we post there and we're communicating, you see all of it? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Everything that's communicated here, if you wanted to see all of it, you can easily see it. Yes. And yes. you have access to who? Like, do, is there levels of clearance on who you have access to want to be able to go see? Let me see if this one guy I don't like, let me see what he stands for. I'm going to go see what this guy's saying to this person here. Could you do that? Or was there limitations to what they sent to you? No. Uh, in the general queue, there were limitations. Where I was, there were not. Were you ever tempted to see some conversations of people that were higher ups or no? I was tempted, yes, but not specifically higher ups. Uh, I have to be honest, politics isn't my thing. I was more curious about seeing what my cousin was saying up in Georgia. <laughs> but um, uh, if I have to be honest, I'm just, like my cousin I'm doesn't a, like me. <laughs> I, I'm not a political person, even though when I was in Cognizant, it was very political in there, but I'm just not much of a politics person to begin with. And, and you know what's the uh, unique thing about talking to you? You're very sincere. You're just like, this is, this is who I am. This is what I'm doing. Uh, were you, again, I, I don't even know, like, what, what do you know about shadow banning that we don't know about? You know, like, you know, when you see sometimes you create content and all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute. Like, you'll see videos that are momentum, momentum, momentum. And typically when a video's momentum goes away, it's typically a drop off like this right? And it goes away. It's just kind of how it works. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. We got a few billion views total online. But sometimes you would see video goes like this, like this, like this. And then sometimes it just goes, boom. That's not possible for a video to do that. There's got to be something that automatically brings it down 90% within a second. What, is shadow banning something that's a real thing that's taking place? And who behind closed doors is moderating who they don't want to get exposure and who they want to get exposure? So the whole process about shadow banning is what they're trying to do is content that they feel is either offensive, controversial, or any sort of content that is just um, they feel like will cause real world harm. They will tend to try to stop it before it becomes too viral. So they don't want it to become a viral message. They don't want it to go mainstream. So they usually just try to cut it off right at that tipping point, right before it would become viral or mainstream. Uh, the people that focus on that type of content were not in Cognizant. They were with the Facebook queue in general. They were the ones that actually worked with Facebook itself. Um, but for shadow banning, as I said before, it was very much that they were just trying to cut off things that were trying to almost on the verge of being viral. There were things that could have that could range from hate speech. They were things that could range from political ideology. They could range from things that could be misinformation about uh, medical uses, medical diagnostics. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people have seen everything go along with the COVID-19 response and how Facebook has been working with that. Um, so it's just things that are going and they're on the verge of being viral, but they have not quite made it yet. They just kind of cut it off right then and there before it gets to that point. Did you see the article that came out a couple of weeks ago saying the fact that Facebook has an elite group of uh, users, I think it's like five to six million people, that no matter what they say, no matter what they put in, the article talked about how Neymar had a picture of some girl that was trying to sue him and he put a picture of her naked or something like that. I don't know the exact yes. story. So um, here, I'm going to put my little plug in here for another thing. Um, the Wall Street Journal has a podcast and they're doing the Facebook files. And so that's where I heard that story from. Yes, it was like some Brazilian baseball player. Mm -hmm. He was very popular in that country. But yes, so apparently, according to these Facebook documents, there is this large group of people and it's not even so much that they're big shot celebrities. They can just be Joe Blows as long as the people in Facebook uh, add them to the list. And these people just get immunity from almost everything. And I thought what was very interesting is that Donald Trump was included into that 
elite group of people that nothing bad could happen to him. Uh, but apparently Trump was in that not. group. Trump was in that five to six million. Yes. Huh. Interesting. Go ahead. You were saying something, but oh, apparently they I was still just took saying, I just found that very interesting that he was part of that group. And then everything after January 6th, he was taken out of that group out of fear of real world retaliation after what happened at the, the Capitol. Sean, let me ask you, how much since you were in this for like seven months, you know, sometimes you have a bad experience with a company or something personal that happens to you, whether it's, you know, uh, testing with a drug, you take a drug and next thing you know, your family member gets addicted to Vicodin, they can't get off of Vicodin and, and they harm themselves. So for the rest of your life, all you're doing is studying Vicodin, right? And doing whatever you can because you're just like obsessed to get to the bottom of it to see what really happens. Sometimes in military, an accidental, somebody dies or there's a suicide and all these other things that happen, you commit your life to wanting to know more about it. Did this kind of get you to say, you know what, I want to kind of get to the bottom and see what the hell is going on? Or were you kind of like, I don't want to have anything to do with this. I'm moving on in my life. Uh, so I just want to say that there's no sort of revenge scheme I have against Facebook. I'm just one little person. I'm not here that, like, if I was trying to go after Facebook, I would definitely have tried to go on, like, Oprah or many other different shows and try to, like, say my story. For one, I don't really want to be famous, known as, hey, you're the guy that watched uh, fetuses be smashed with hammers for 10 hours every day, six days a week. Like, that's not really what I would want to be known for. Um, the reason that I'm doing this and I speak out is because when I started working with Facebook, I thought that the least I could do is try to help the people and animals whose last moments were being desecrated. Even if it's on video or picture, people that were mocking it, making fun of it, getting off to it with sexual pleasure. I wanted to at least help these animals and people in their dying moments and at least give them closure. That's all I wanted to do is try to help. And they even kind of sold it to us when we first started with the training is that you're going to be the police of Facebook. You're going to be policing it, monitoring it. You're going to make it a safer place. And I really bought into that. I, it's, I want to, I wish I could, you know, wash my hands of it all and just go, I don't care anymore. I don't want to hear it anymore. But there was, there was too much that happened on Facebook that should not have ever been allowed. And I would probably put money on it. Those same people are still making that same content. One thing that really got to me, and this happened um, last year, and it was this woman that works, uh, that was an activist, and she was telling me that she was going uh, to Congress to talk about these specific things. So we talked a couple times, and last year she called me, and she said, did you work? on these specific types of things in Texas. And it was about these girls that were being held in their parents' basement and being used as like sex toys and prostitutes. And I said, yes, I did work on that. Apparently the authorities just found out at that time and arrested them. That was two years after I left Facebook. And I wrote the report on that and I did my best to make sure the authorities would try to get it, make sure Facebook would take it seriously, but Facebook wouldn't let it get out. And so those girls suffered for two extra years. And there were many other cases similar to that. And they wanted me to confirm that it was that I actually sent a report in and discuss that stuff. And just makes me mad that they suffered two extra years because Facebook couldn't even do the right thing and let the authorities know what, what it was. There was another instance and it was one of the first things I saw and it was these two boys and they grabbed an iguana by the tail and they smashed the iguana onto the pavement and the iguana was just screaming I've never heard an iguana scream. 
and I don't think most people have. And they kept doing it and doing it and smashing the iguana onto the pavement until it was just a bloody pulp with a tail. And apparently those boys had their own private Facebook page where they were bashing other animals to death as well. And they never took it down. That iguana video was still up and they were making more videos of more animals they were killing and they were getting paid for it. That's why I want to get this message out is because people are suffering and nobody's doing anything about it. And you may think that it's all just on a different screen. It's not real. They want you to sensitize to it. But people are actually making money off this thing. And I think that's the most disgusting thing in the world is that people are getting paid and there are people that want to pay you to make this content. And that's why I do this. And yes, I would like to get the bottom of this. I would like to know more about what the heck they're doing in there. For somebody, uh, you know, uh, for somebody who's on the inside, uh, Sean, who this is your world, what, what can Facebook do? Meaning, is, is it in their control to be able to address this and stop it? That's one. So let's just say the answer is yes. If the answer is yes, what can they do? They've been talking about AI for a long time. Uh, you know, from your perspective, and, and, and again, Sean, I appreciate you for sharing that, and it's 100% felt from speaking to you. It's very obvious that uh, you're not doing this for a dollar. You're doing this because, you know, uh, animals and people matter to you. Even when you said earlier, I'm not a politics guy. I don't follow politics. I don't know what's going on with politics, but it's not my world. But what would you say? What would you say, you know, on what they can do to eliminate all of this? Is it AI? Is it internal team? Is it, what do you think that is? So the, the first thing that they truly need to do is if Facebook really wants to make this change is Zuckerberg has to step down because Zuckerberg is kind of, he's the one in the way of all this. He's the one that makes all decisions He's the one that signs off on everything. And this is Zuckerberg's creation. So if we had someone that was not him in control, then perhaps we could actually get something done because I ha I don't see Zuckerberg ever bending the, the, the knee, so to speak, to actually make these changes. What I think needs to be changed could be Facebook needs to be divided up into different segments and then have these different independent individuals actually be in charge of these segments. Maybe we really do need some sort of government influence uh, looking into this. I know a lot of people will claim that that would be like an oversight of the American government, but when something has grown this big and it has such a, an importance in not just our society, but world society, maybe it needs to not be a private company and maybe it should be some sort of public entity. I mean, Facebook is so big along with other social media sites that maybe we shouldn't consider it a private company. Maybe we should consider it as something as a public square. Maybe it should be considered something that would be the equivalent of going out in public and saying something and not something that is controlled by a private entity. Um, the only other thing I could possibly think of Facebook to do is maybe Facebook just needs to do a total revamp of their policies. Because when I was working there, even though the policies were changing by the day, they were only changing by specific current events and they would only change for like specific people. So like a great example would be um, during the Justice Kavanaugh hearings, I'll use that example again. Um, normally, you're not allowed to make any sort of disparaging bullying comments about people that claim that they are survivors of rape or molestation or anything like that. But Facebook made an exception with Dr. Ford. So you were actually allowed to make fun of her for that. Oh, I, I apologize. It's okay. Um, and they so, made an exception. You were saying they made an exception for Dr. Ford. Yes. Yeah, so, so everybody could make fun of her. Everybody could like claim that she was asking for it. She was a slut. She was a whore. They could claim that. 
And for normal cases, you're not because it would get deleted. Um, but those were like the examples of like policies changing for specific people or specific events. And their policies were so hyper specific. I think in a normal ruling body, we could all agree that, you know, killing, killing animals online should be banned. I don't think there's any reason why we should have it on there. But apparently there's still like a lot of stipulations, like you can kill animals on video as long as it's in like an eating, preparing food setting, or you can also kill animals if it's in a perceived self-defense setting where there's a lot of people that took advantage of those and they just like mutilated a bear because they claimed that they were hunting a bear in self-defense. And so they had a caption that said like, killing that said like, you know, we're killing the bear in self-defense and they were like ripping its jaw off and like just torturing the thing while it was still alive and drugged up. And Facebook allowed that because the caption said, oh, it was in self-defense. So of course we can allow that. So it's just like these policies are just, they're so easy to find loopholes on. Crazy thing I'm gonna throw out there. Tell me what you think about this. Do you think, do you think there's any chance that maybe a, a, uh, 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 a large, you know, a country like China has uh, additional motives on the inside where they want to hurt this great country of America and they want to figure out a way to internally destroy the younger generation, you know, any, do you think China has any influence over Facebook? It's hard to say. If I had to be honest, I, I can't give a yes or no answer okay. on that. I respect that. I respect that. Uh, you know, sometimes you, you read articles and it says uh, the hands a country like China has on these major uh, social media companies. And, and, and the other part is typically when you see one person gets off on a site, everybody else follows suit. Do you think there is a coalition amongst all the major social media sites where they work together, where if one bans somebody, the other follows as well? Yes, yes, okay. but only when it's people that are in higher up position. So if it's just like regular Joe guy, I, they're not going to do that. But if it's someone that is more influential, like as you said, Alex Jones before, of course, they're going to follow suit on that. Exactly. Of course, they did the same thing with Donald Trump. If it was a different sort of celebrity, I'm sure that they would have all gotten together and gone like, yeah, let's all do a joint ban on him. That makes sense. Do you think Trump should have been banned or Alex Jones should have been banned? Uh, so that one's a difficult question because I, if I understand correctly, Alex Jones was the man who, uh, claimed that the Sandy Hook shooting was a false flag and that the kids that died in that were actually not killed and they're still alive somewhere and the parents are lying. So Alex Jones. I don't know his specifics of everything he said. Has he claimed? Uh, has he claimed any sort of real-world harm against anybody? Has he personally? Has has any of his uh, posts anything? Have they claimed any real-world harm? Like, has he like claimed that he would like do something to someone? Any specific groups? Has he been antagonizing like a specific uh, demographic of people? I, I couldn't uh, uh, verify that. So that one, I would honestly have to look up because guess what? The internet is made for conspiracy theories. It's made for the crazies. I mean, that's what the internet is. Go to any website, you'll find that anywhere, even Wikipedia. I mean, I'm not dissing Wikipedia. I just mean it's, that's the internet. The internet was made for insane theories. That's just what it is. Uh, but regarding Donald Trump, uh, <laughs> So what happened at the Capitol was incredibly weird. I personally do think that he riled up his fans to go do that. I don't really know if there was an ulterior motive to it, but I do know that he, I would consider him to be the one that, you know, lit the match, so to speak. But I, you see, these, these are tough questions because I don't want to come on here thinking that I'm like politically motivated one way or another. So I, I'm trying not to come off that way. Um, but I guess just for the most part, it's really tough because from an ethical standpoint, you could make that argument that it's a public forum. He did say everybody to go home afterwards. 
he did. He actually did make that post. I remember seeing that where he said, like, everybody go home. We love you. Um, I understand that. And I understand just uh, he had broken other policies before there was. But as a public figure, especially the president of the United States, it's really difficult to say, like, if you're allowed to break it. If we treat him like a normal person, if he did not have the check mark next to his Twitter account, yes, he should have been banned because as a normal person, he was breaking the rules and the policies. But since he was the president of the United States, I feel like the social media companies should have had more of a sit down with him and say, if you're going to do diplomacy through social media, we need to set something up that can actually make that happen. Maybe social media needs to grow and figure out how to do diplomacy through Twitter. Maybe that is an idea that we think is really stupid, but it also should be something that maybe we should actually think about. Maybe it could be realistic in the future. Because if you're doing it through social media and Twitter, at least you're like uh, speaking to the public and actually getting your point across so everybody knows where you stand. It's a, it's a very difficult subject. I mean, if I said yes, he should be banned, there's more to it than that. And if I said no, he shouldn't be banned, there's more to it. These are subjects that require more than just a yes or no answer. Uh, is your birthday, are you a September or October baby? Or when, when, what month are you? June, believe it or not, I'm actually June 13th. So I'm actually like, I think, a day before after Trump's yeah. birthday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but the way you're 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 reasoning and the way you're going, very very interesting. Do you think most of these moderators are politically motivated or no? Like, are some of them? Yes, I'll just say yes because that's all I heard. That's all I heard when I worked there. Um, there were so many people that were of different uh, political backgrounds. I had many people that were hard Democrats that hated anything a Trump supporter said, and they delete it. And then on the other end, I heard people that were hardcore Trump supporters, and they were just like, I hate libtards. I want to get rid of this stuff. So I heard it, and there were there was constantly bickering and fighting in between there. And I can say for a fact that uh, some of the team leads I worked under, they were politically motivated because they would flat out tell us their thoughts. So, yes, the moderators I did work with were politically motivated. Sean, I got to tell you, I... Uh... I've really enjoyed talking to you. I haven't enjoyed the stories, like to visually for my mind to go there and you know, it's, it's extremely disturbing. But your approach on you having the courage to go out there and talk about this, where you're getting the audience to be thinking about these is issues uh, that are day to day on a platform that we all use on a daily basis. All of us are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. It's, part of our daily lifestyle. It's what 30 years ago, somebody would go home and they would turn on the TV to watch something. Today, people turn on their phones to look at what's going on. And you, uh, uh, you seem very sincere. There was nothing that felt like there was a motivation there for you on one side or the other. You're just kind of being a matter of fact and sharing your uh, uh, thoughts on this. And I appreciate that. I'll give the final thoughts to you. If you want to say anything uh, final to the uh, viewer, I'll leave it up to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, for all those that are watching, thank you very much for tuning in and hearing my story out. If I could get any sort of message across, it would be that going forward with social media, we need to be more careful with how we go about it. We need to be more careful on how we interact through social media. We need to be more careful about how we treat others through social media. And finally, the biggest point I wanted to get across about this is Facebook has this horrible content that I have spoken about with animals, people, babies, toddlers, women, children, and Facebook refuses to take action on it. And for anyone that's listening that has any sort of anger from this, like I do, please, let's try to stop this because the last thing that we want is for more of this violence to happen on there and more people to make money off of animals and people suffering. Thank you. Sean, appreciate your time, buddy. Thank you so much.
All right. Thank you very much for having me on again, Anytime. sir. Anytime. Anytime. Thank you. And by the way, just out of curiosity, what are you thinking about what he, you just heard right now? Very, the messaging. Like, yeah, we can check your messages. And then the one-sided with moderators, their job, how it's on the outside, how they reported what stays, just because it's a private group. What are you thinking right now? What's your biggest take? Well, I want to hear your thoughts. Comment below. And if you uh, uh, were enlightened by this interview, there's two other videos I think you'll like. One of them is one I did with Cambridge Analytica. Brittany Kaiser, who is a whistleblower, her and I sat down and talked about it. Click over that. Click here to uh, watch that interview. And the other one is what John McAfee had to say about social media and his level of trust for social media, cell phones. He took a different angle. And he's not here with us, but this is an interview I did with him four or five years ago. If you've not seen it, click over here to watch that as well. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.